Every great sorcerer needs a magical wand. Some of them can levitate things, others shoot scary spells and stuff, others can light up the darkness, while some will turn you into a frog. Ribbit. Being a huge advocate for STEM education, I wanted to gift my niece and nephew something a little bit more magical this year. So, I came up with this. Just like a sorcerer's wand, this is capable of its own magic. With the push of a button, it emits wireless energy that lights up light bulbs, neon lights, and just about any fluorescent light you can think of. It's also rechargeable. I documented the whole build so that you can share in the magic. Hey, it's Jay, you're watching Plasma Channel. Recently, I've really come to appreciate the Slayer Exciter circuit. It's a really simple form of resonator that takes literal minutes to build, can create some really impressive voltages, and pumps out an insane amount of RF energy. It also can be built really compact. Take, for example, this pancake slayer I built from a previous video. From three 9-volt batteries, it makes gnarly 1-inch arcs and lights fluorescent tubes, among other things. I'll leave a link down below to that video. Inside this wand is the same standard Slayer Exciter circuit. Powered by a single 9-volt battery, this wand emits about 5 watts of high-frequency energy. Let's break down the parts of a Slayer circuit and how they apply to this wand. There's only 5 components to the circuit. A transistor acting as a digital switch, an LED which only lets electricity flow in one direction, a resistor which limits current flow, a primary coil, and the secondary coil. They're all wired as seen here and then attached to a 9-volt battery. Inside the handle is the drive circuitry, the transistor, resistor, and LED. In the middle of the wand is the primary coil, and the length of the wand is the secondary coil. Okay, here's how I built the wand and put it all together. It's actually really straightforward and follows the circuit schematic. First, let's talk about the materials used. One MJE3055T transistor, a high-powered LED, a momentary switch, one 22 kilo ohm resistor, a 9-volt battery holder, a rechargeable 9 volt, some bell wire, 32 gauge magnet wire, some fake leather strapping, and 8 inch length of half inch wide acrylic tube. Starting off the build, this tube acts as a backbone for the entire project. Taking the magnet wire, tape it firmly to one end, then wind about 4 and 3 quarters inches worth of secondary. I did this by hand because my drill was having a hissy fit. Afterwards, add tape to the other end and make sure the ground wire is left to hang out. Then chop up an angle bracket to create a switch mount. Insert the switch and bolt it down. Next, grab your battery holder and add epoxy to one side. Glue the switch in place. Then add epoxy to the underside and attach it to the exposed tube. It should sit something like this. While that's drying, the oscillator needs to be wired up. So take the transistor and wire the resistor and the LED into place. Next, you'll want to add bell wire to both the emitter and collector of the transistor. Afterwards, wind the primary coil. This consists of three turns of bell wire wrapped around the close end of the secondary. Tape it into place. This is where it all comes together. The circuitry can now slide directly into the handle, and the connections to the primary slash battery can be added. And don't forget to solder the ground of the secondary coil to the transistor base. If using a USB rechargeable 9 volt, make sure to drill out a hole in the battery holder to allow for the USB cable. Otherwise, you won't be able to charge it. Next, you need to insulate the open connections on the back of the wand so that you don't end up touching them. Finally, wrap the handle with the fake leather, and this build is complete! Huh. The LED should light up if it's built correctly, and if it doesn't light up, just reverse your primary connections. Now, the fake leather wrapping serves a purpose besides just appearance and grip, it also electrically isolates your hand from the circuit. You see, I found through a lot of testing that if your hand comes into contact with the metal casing of the 9 volt or touches the base wire of the secondary, the circuit flat up just won't turn on. With it all built, here is what it's capable of. All this magic requires energy, so when the battery's low, just plug it in to recharge some of that good old magic power. Cool. I'm actually really happy with how the wand turned out, and any more powerful, it would be making sparks out of the end, which just isn't safe for children. Now there's some really cool science at work with this wand, so 
How is it able to do such magical things? Here's your 30 seconds of physics. With flowing electricity comes an electromagnetic field. This layer circuit turns itself on and off at a really fast rate, over one megahertz. That's over a million times a second it turns itself on and off. And the secondary coil takes the nine volts from the nine volt battery and boosts it up to several hundred volts. So that long red secondary coil emits a strong electromagnetic field that oscillates at over a million times a second. Strong enough alternating electric fields will ionize pretty much all gases, whether it be the argon in this bulb, the xenon in this tube, the neon in this neon array, or in the case of a modern light bulb, the gases present in the fluorescent tube. So when you see the lights turn on, that's an indication of invisible energy present. It's a brilliantly simple way to transmit power wirelessly over short distances. So now you've got yourself a wireless power wand. As always, filming this video was a total blast and I'd love to know your thoughts, so leave your comments down below. And share this video with other people who you think might enjoy it, so parents and makers as well. Last of all, if you'd like to support my work while getting a few extra perks like seeing my videos a day early, please consider supporting my work on Patreon. You stay classy, you cats.